Hi guys, welcome back to part two of the roguelike series. So in this video today, we're going to be focusing on our enemy movement as well as the enemy spawn and then the destroy of the enemy once it collides with the bullet instance. Now, if you haven't seen the first video, I highly recommend watching that first. That'll give you better context of what it is we're doing. And uh, I thought we'd focus on the enemy today and the spawn and the random spawns purely on the premise that we can get a better idea in the context of the game as a whole. And then we can start juicing it up and obviously the functions and everything else that comes with it. So it shows the reload, different guns, families, and so on. Okay, so let's go in and first add a group. I'm going to right click this and click add group and let's go and call this enemy AI. Just to start off with. Right, and yeah, we're going to add the events for all the enemy movement, etc. Then over on the object list, I'm going to go ahead and just say a new, insert a new object. And I think what we need to do is start off with a sprite. And we're going to create three three or four, it all depends on, 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 on your game. Let's go and create three or four instances of the enemy spawn, you could say, platform. So let's go ahead and just change this to a whatever it needs to be. I think we just chose 16 by 16 in the previous or 32 by 32. Whatever your grid size is, you can decide. So let's call that spawn point one. Let's go ahead and call that spawn point. Sorry, let me just rename that first. Let's call this enemy spawn point because we want them to come from the different angles over here and do another one over here so it's nice and clean right so now that we have our enemy spawn point this is essentially where we're going to want our enemies to spawn from the next thing i want to do is go ahead and just add a new uh, sprite again and i'm going to do very similar to what i did with the play in terms of the collision i like to have my enemies players and everything have collisions so that if they were walking on pathfinding or using any elements such as move to movements and, and using tile sets and things as such it's a lot easier if you have the base moving opposed to a you could say shape that is obscure or has got funny you know angles and things and it gets stuck on certain walls and certain corners okay so we're going to go ahead and just do the same here just go with 16 by 16 I think it was 32 by 32. Let's just keep the 32 in terms of the player by 32. These spawn points are fine, right? So that is our player. Now, we're going to want to obviously destroy this essentially because I'm going to spawn this and this will give us an extra one. And this is why we use a different object, you could say layout, which I'm going to do. Let's just go ahead and do that. Then it's actually just better practice. So let's go ahead and just scroll down to our objects here and i'm going to go ahead and lay out and I say add another layout but i'm going to say only add the layout don't add the event sheet so i'm going to add the layout and i'm going to hit and then we can basically copy or in this case i'm just going to cut it um cut this out along with the others we'll do that later and start pasting them in our in our objects sort of inventory if you want to call it that so we don't have to destroy them on layout otherwise it's just extra events unnecessary events okay only works really with spawn items that you're going to spawn off screen all right okay so enemy ai and let's go ahead and do a few things the first thing we're going to do is create a function now we could do global functions which i quite like so i think let's go ahead and let's do that first so we're going to right click here and say add a function uh, and we're going to call this spawn spawn enemy for the sake of this tutorial okay so in the spawn enemy we're going to do a sub event and on the sub event, I'm going to want to basically select random spots with regards to this. So I'm going to pick a random spot. So in this case, I'm going to go system. I'm going to say pick a random instance of that object, which is going to be the spawn. So let's go to spawn point. So what I'm telling it now is basically on start, which we will set and call the function accordingly, go and randomly spawn these, you could say enemies at random spawn point. So that looks a little bit more natural. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and then now begin the system and we're gonna now create the spawn. So we're gonna say, I think it's called create instead of spawn. So let's go create an object. And the object is gonna be, you guessed it, it's gonna be the enemy collision. Now I haven't got to rename that, so that's quite crucial that we go and do that. So let's go ahead here and just say enemy collision. collision. So where we have it, and then our event sheet will make more sense. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead. We're going to basically create this. We we on on layer zero, so we'll keep it at the base layer for now, and that will create our you could say enemy at random spawn points. But obviously, this needs to be called 
um, on start of layout. So what we're going to do here, just for the sake of this tutorial, we basically on start of layout, we're going to add a sub event. Let's just go and add sub event. And in this case, I'm going to say every, let's go system. I'm going to go every, let's say two seconds. Okay. We're going to go and call that function. So we get on functions and we should see spawn enemy, the function we made. So we're now on the start of layout, it's going to go ahead and call it. The next thing I want to do is basically on the enemy collision, I want to go and add the movement behavior. So in this case, we're going to be using move to. We're not going to use the path for now. We'll do that in a separate tutorial, but the move to is enough to give it that you know simple behavior. Now, next thing we want to also do is set the move to behavior accordingly that it's not faster than us. And, and this can vary. If you've got slime or something that's you know quick or flying, you want to set this you know based on your, your game. So in this case, I'm just going to double check to see when I set the player. It's 100, and let's make him slightly slower. So we're going to make him 90, and let's call it acceleration. Can be 300, and he moves up to speed, and deceleration, you know, 150 or whatever. We can set the angle. Um, if we're going to add an animation, we're going to not want to set the angle because that could change it. But let's let's just remove the set the angle for now. Okay, then we can go ahead and test this theory. All right, so before we go ahead and preview everything, let's just make sure everything is correct. We've got the every two seconds on start of layout, which I think is wrong. Let's go ahead and actually pull that out because on start of layout, we'll only trigger once. So every two seconds, let's call the enemy spawn. We've got pick a random spawn, which we went ahead and created over here. All right, so set them to invisible so that um, you, know, you don't see them on the screen. Um, and then create the object on layer and this is incorrect so we, what we're going to do here is actually say it to the enemy spawn point so we're going to go enemy spawn point and we're going to go dot x so that it is on this instance that it's being picked randomly and dot y okay that should be it and that should go ahead and spawn our characters let's go ahead and test that so we should see all the three blocks now randomly just selecting so they should spawn here now here we go there's one any of the others randomly going to be selected every two seconds? There's another one. Okay, you get the point. So the enemies are now spawning. Next thing we need to do is create the created event. So let's go ahead and say, just add here and say enemy collision on created. Um, let's say on created. Let's move the player to, you can say to us, I guess, for, for this one. So on created, we can do a few things. In this case, we're going to just use the move to because it's a roguelike he's going to come straight to you so he'll have line of uh you don't need to actually now that i think about it, we don't need the line of sight here we can just use the move to because it is a roguelike it's all in the same screen same dungeon so we're going to say move to an object and in this case that object is going to be the player collision okay click ok click done right so now that we know he's going to move there let's go ahead and add another event i think which is important we have got this gun on stepping if it overlaps at the wall if the bullets on step and it's overlapping the wall it'll do x and then we go to a new one here and say add sub event and we can say if the bullet is overlapping another object and in this case the enemy otherwise they end up killing the enemy and the bullet at the same time uh all enemies sorry so we're going to say enemy collision and say done and then we can go ahead and say destroy. So on the enemy collision, I want to do something that's a little bit smarter. Let's say on spawn enemy, let's move it to function, I think. Let's call it player hurt. Okay, let's do this. Let's go ahead and say enemy. Sorry if I'm bouncing around. Let's go and add a new one. Let's call it health, because we need to work with the health regardless anyway. So let's go and add health, call it the number, and let's give a number of basic number of Four, no, two. Got to kill him. You got to shoot him twice. Okay. All right. So if he shot twice, then go ahead and do something. Then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create now a function that is going to manage this all together. Now this is quite important. Yeah, we've got if it overlaps, you destroy that said enemy. But this is going to get chaos if you're going to pin animations to it because it's going to destroy all the animations of the one of all the characters opposed to just the one because you have to pass the uid instance across so i'm going to go ahead and again i love functions i'm going to go ahead and add a new function i'm going to call this enemy hurt okay this just contains it into a nice formality now what i'm going to do here slightly different is i'm going to go ahead and add a parameter and this parameter needs to be two things one being damage and you'll understand why 
And the other one I want to add is going to be, of course, the enemy, yeah, enemy UID. Okay, that's the UID I was referring to. Now, what I want to do here is I want to pick the instance of that. So I'm going to go right click and I want to say add a sub event. And I'm going to say then here is the enemy collision pick. Yes, should it come up? Let's pick a by unique ID. And yeah, I'm going to pass this enemy UID that you see over here because this is coming from the one that I hit or penetrate. I'm going to pass that. Now, what I'm actually saying to this code is, all right, I'm going to call the function when it's hurt. So over here, when it says bullet is overlapping enemy, I'm going to call the function. So this function here is going to be a function. It's going to be enemy hurt. It's the first function we play because we want to check and see this health. But now you'll see there's two parameters that have come up that I've gone and created. One being the enemy UID, which is going to be the enemy collision UID. So let's go ahead and add that. But the second one, yeah, and I'll put it in dynamically for now, it's going to be the damage you want your weapon to do. So let's go ahead and set it. So we're all bouncing around a little bit, but I get you guys understand the concept. Let's go back to the weapon quickly. And on the weapon itself, we've got speed and we've got ammo. Let's add another one. It's called a damage because each weapon will have different damage. So let's go and say damage and we will set the default to one. You know, that's the damage. Every bullet that hits you, it's one damage on the specific gun. We're going to deal with one gun for now. We'll change it. So when the bullet overlaps this user, what we want to do is we want to set the damage dynamically because you don't want this all to be hard coded. We want to say play a gun. And of course, you guessed it. We're going to say dot and we're going to look for damage by typing in damage. OK, so now we're passing two values to this function. On the when it laps, I'm going to remove this for now, delete it because we don't want to delete it. I'm going to come down to the instance here, and now I can perform some checks with regards to you know it's now hit. So the first thing you want to want to do is subtract from the health. So yeah, we're going to for instance go on this pickup instance, we're going to say enemy collision, subtract, because now I want to subtract the health that I set on the instance variable. I'm going to say subtract. And they say health, I'm going to say one for now. Remember, we set it if we go back to our layout and we click on the, the little collision, you'll see we set the health to two, it means it's got to take two hits. Now, this you can, on start of layout, you can set the health. You can also have an array where you can then do a dictionary. We'll get into it. I don't want to jump across. I want to try and keep it as condensed, the video, as well as try and keep it as informative as possible. So when the player is hurt, we are passing the damage of the weapon so we know how much damage to send this enemy. We are subtracting one from its health, okay? Now, what you could do here is the following instead, which is probably better. Don't subtract one, subtract the damage that is passed in the variable instance. So if the gun's doing two, you know, now it's all become dynamic. So we're subtracting the damage, great. So damage, obviously I've gone ahead and spelled that correctly. Let me just edit that. Damage, sorry about that. So now we've got the damage, we're subtracting it and then we can now do some checks. So now that we've subtracted damage, we need to do another check. We're gonna add a sub event and we're gonna say player enemy collision. If he's, you're gonna compare a value, compare an instance variable, right? Where his health is less or equal to zero. In other words, if it's less or equal to zero, you can now go ahead and kill him, okay? So we can say if less or equal to zero, we can say then enemy yeah destroy, which is going to be enemy collision, destroy. Now we've just created an entire state system, hurt system, you could say, that manages our player hurt correctly prior to him just getting destroyed. You see, we call it here. So let's just reiterate all the code. We call a function. The function itself passes two values, the damage of the gun, which is passed over here, of which the gun is set an instance variable we've set it to one okay so if we go ahead now and just confirm set it to one we set the and we're going to pick the enemy that we are in contact with we're passing it and then we go ahead and do it because if we subtract one without this enemy collision uid we're going to subtract one from every single enemy which is what you don't want to do so now if i go ahead and just say play i need to shoot them twice so let's go ahead and wait for him to come so one shot, okay, that's one. I think that's just going through him completely. The bullet itself is running through the overlap. So what we need to do there is basically 
if the bullet is on step and it's on collision, we need to actually destroy the bullet. So let's go ahead and copy that. And that should work. Destroy the bullet first, or no. Call the function and then destroy the bullet. So now it should work with two. So even I have to debug. All right, let's wait for it again. So one shot, two shots. One shot, two shots. One shot, two shots. Fantastic. So now we know that that is working. So the next thing we want to do is just test that theory. If we can set the damage now to two, and I run it now, it should only take one shot to kill it. Let's have a look. Wait for him to come. One shot, and he's now dead. Right, guys, so you get the idea of, of passing instance variables through functions that then make the game a lot more dynamic. Because you now you'll notice that we've got nothing set yet at static. Everything is dynamic. It's all based on the stats. So when this game starts, you can say, set the damage, set this. As the guns get upgraded, change the damage without having to go and change all these instance variables, all these events to then correctly, you know, fit the narrative of the upgrades and so forth. So this is a much better approach and I highly recommend obviously going with that. Right, so now that we have our gun that is, uh, is colliding, the bullet, sorry, that is colliding correctly, we also now have the enemy hurt function as well as the enemy spawn function. Right, so I'm going to leave it at that, at this video. I'll try and bring out another one a lot sooner than, than you know, too far and wide apart. And we can then focus on uh, the enemy animations, just to build that in, as well as some, some juice in and around that. But I think this is a great uh, starting point with regards to enemy AI, as well as correcting and managing a damage passed through functions uh, in a dynamic way. But the gangs, guys, I really do appreciate the love and support. If you could just hit that subscribe and hit the bell notification, it gets the old YouTube algorithm going again. And it always encourages me to keep making more content for you guys, which I really do enjoy. Peace and see you guys in the next one.